This is my custom square drop trailer I'm building, and we're gonna add shocks to it today. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to be installing these Monroe 5752 shocks that have a total extended length of 12.75 inches so we can fit them in our trailer. To mount this shock to our axle, we're gonna be using these shock tabs. I have a 1.75 inch axle, so that's what these are for. Link will be in the description to these below. If you have a different size axle or a square axle, you'll need to buy different shock tabs. Or if you don't have a welder, you can buy one of these U-bolt plates that has a shock bolt coming off of it. For our upper shock mount, I'm using these stake holders from Home Depot. I like these that you can either bolt on or weld on, but we're gonna cut these wings off and weld it on, but first we need to drill a hole in the middle. Using a step bit, which is about $6 at Walmart, it's probably on its last life after three uses, we're gonna drill this hole big enough for our shock bolt to mount into here. To cut the wings off, you can either use your $300 saw that everybody has laying around, or you can use that $20 grinder from Harbor Freight. I have the saw, so I used it, but you can use a grinder just as easily. Now I am mounting this on some two by two square tubing, and these things are a little bit wider than two inches. So I do take a grinder and cut these out just to narrow them down so it's even on my frame. Now with our upper shock mount done, we're gonna use this Dorman Help Shock Bolt Kit. This comes with the bushings, but ours already does. It is a mount on one side and you just slide the shock tube on the other side. I've had good experiences with this kit previously, so I decided to reuse it. I'm gonna put this all together here so we can mock it up in a test fit. So we're gonna put everything together just snugly. Now to mount this shock to our lower shock tabs, we are gonna be using a 5 8 inch grade eight bolt from Home Depot. Now I did have to drill out the shock tabs a bit to make these bolts fit, but once we were done with that, everything fit and works great. With everything put together looking nice, it's now time to move it to the trailer to mock it up. First thing you have to do here is jack up your trailer to relieve all tension off the spring so you're at your max height. Now take your shock, figure out where you need to mount it on your axle and on your frame. This will be different for everybody. You should probably measure this before you buy a shock. This is just the shortest shock available from Monroe that I could find on Amazon. Now once you've figured out your correct placement, you need to mark it so that you can grind away and weld. So clamp everything in place, take your marker, mark everywhere on your axle, on your frame, mark around your axle tube so that you can see how far you need to grind away of where you need to weld your tabs. Something to consider with your shock is that the more upright it is, the more effective it is. I found this chart online, which looks like it was sketched in 1965. I don't know how true it is, but by judging by this chart, I'm at 52 degrees, which is roughly a D, and we all know Ds get degrees. Now it's time to grind away all the paint. And remember to use your PPE, use your eye goggles, your hearing protection, and your respirator if you have one. If not, go buy one because all this stuff coming off here is bad for you and your ears don't heal. Your lungs don't like this stuff in them. They don't like it. So please use your personal protective equipment when doing this and make sure you grind away everything so that you're welding on clean metal. Once grinding everything away, time to take your parts and put them in the correct spot clamp them in place because it's easier that way and then you are going to weld them in place now i recommend you just do a couple tabs just to keep it semi-permanent so that you can test fit it also welding upside down kind of sucks so this is me welding a tab upside down and i don't enjoy it once i got my first tab welded on i took my bolt and shock and ran it through and tightened it up so that it could be an accurate test fit template and i just tacked this in place that way it's not permanent and also it doesn't melt the shock because this will very easily melt that rubber bushing now with both mounts welded up, a little tacked in place, I wanted to test fit one more time before I fully weld anything. And as you can see, everything works perfectly. Now just remove the shock and fully weld the inside and outside of these shock tabs. And then I would just weld the outside of my upper shock mount because there's plenty of area for that to be welded on. My trailer is not that heavy anyway, so I'm not worried. After everything has cooled down, it's time to spray paint to get rid of all this bare metal so that we don't have any rust issues. So go ahead and hit your shock tabs, hit your upper shock mount. Make sure you're getting up, down, left, right, everywhere because you don't want any rust forming anywhere. Once the paint has dried, it's time for you to mount your shock. Go ahead and do the uppers first, get it pushed through and tightened. These doorman shock bolts are an 11 16 and a 3 quarter inch wrench. And you're going to have to use a wrench because of the angles of where you're at. Make sure you get both sides in before you tighten anyone too far down. That way it all fits. 
This one is a 5 8 inch bolt with a 15th, 16th inch head. Once both sides are in, you can go ahead and tighten your shock. Make sure you don't over tighten this. You want the shock to be able to still move slightly. Same with the underneath, go ahead and tighten it, but not super tight because you want the shock to be able to swing a bit. After that, lower your trailer. Now hop on it to demonstrate for the YouTube video you just made, but remember to jump on that one piece you forgot you didn't weld right, and then let out a word not appropriate for YouTube. And just like that, you have a shock on your trailer. I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to stay in the loop and watch me finish this trailer build and probably mess up more things. But until then, have a good one.